Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Alan Kirk and I've got a pen, ink and watercolour sketch of San Gervais sur la mer in the Hirault. I visited this village on a cycling trip and this was a sketch I did just before lunch and what you can see there is as far as I got before I got called to lunch and I never managed to come back and, and finish the sketch. But that gave me the opportunity to finish at home and I'm able to do it under a video recorder. My kit here is an A5 watercolour sketchbook. It's perfect on, on a cycling trip. And I've got my Rottering Art pen. The pen has an extra fine nib which I love and it's got D. Atrimentis black permanent ink in it. Um, the permanent ink means that when I put a watercolour on, it won't move and it'll remain there and it'll stay there and it'll show through. <clears throat> when I do these outdoor sketches, I'm really trying to tell two stories. The first story is how I did the sketch. And the permanent black ink is so important to that because when the sketch is finished, there it is, you can see the skeleton. And the second story is I'm inspired by the place I'm at and I want to tell the story of the mood and the atmosphere and the feel of that place. That's a really important point for me because I'm not trying to reproduce a photograph. And it means I don't have to put everything in, I can move things around, I can change the composition and as long as I'm happy that I've got the mood and the atmosphere of the place I'll be happy with that sketch. In this case, there wasn't much to change. I missed out a few things. I missed out um, a few cars. I approach all my sketches in the same way. And with my drawings, I start inside and work outwards. Um, in this sketch, when I was sat there, I started very close to where the pen is now, just on the edge of the house that I'm putting the, the stone wall in. Um, so the vertical line that I'm just touching there, that would be my first line. And from that line, I work outwards. And I move quickly, I work quickly, I move around the paper, and I try to keep my mind out of the drawing. So I had an old teacher who said, paint what you see, not what you think. And that's what I'm trying to do here with my drawing. To draw what I see, not what I think. Our mind analyses it and it isn't like doing a jigsaw, so it isn't like there's a house, let's draw that house and let's move on to the next one. Move around, put in the shapes and never worry about perspective. For example, um, I just try and put the shape of the roof as I see it. So I'm not interested in vanishing lines and perspective lines. I have a mantra when I'm drawing and I'm saying to myself, keep the pen moving, keep the pen moving. I find that if I, I get slow, the lines get deliberate and start to lose some of the energy. I don't like precision and I like my lines to be disjointed and um, sketchy and imprecise. And here with these windows, if we, as humans, we analyse and we look and we work out how many bolts there are, how the shutters work. Not needed for this sketch, just an impressionistic view of those windows. Just an impressionistic indication or suggestion of those windows. Now you can see I've just jumped around, jump around. It's like you get tired in one area and you think, well, right, I'll just move around, I'll move somewhere else. And here I'm putting the cars in. And never worry about mistakes. For example, I don't think you could get in those cars and I don't think they would drive away very safely. But never worry about mistakes. We're making suggestions. If we get too hung up on precision and making it look right, um, first of all, we won't enjoy it. And secondly, it won't work with the rest of the buildings. So be very suggestive and keep your mind out of it. Don't let it think, oh, that doesn't work. That wheel wouldn't really be there. Just get that impression. I 
glide in the pen. It's a good idea to glide the pen, apart from anything else. If you've got watercolour paper, which this is, um, it, there's a danger you can scratch it with a fountain pen. And I probably decide, I think, that uh, those windows are a bit small. I might make them a bit bigger. But again, when I'm saying never worry about mistakes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. Um, you can make adjustments if you think, well, that just doesn't work. Um, I always draw from the pen straight away. It's not, um, it's not always normal to do that. A lot of people will, will do pencil first. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've been drawing outside in, in the south of France and southern Europe now for the last 20 years. An awful lot. Not every day, but just about. And I've just got used to going straight in with my pen. Just straight in. And in that, if, if you've got that idea that you never worry about mistakes, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. So there we are, that's kind of a bar that's on top of the car there, I think. I'm um, suggesting some windows. And quite honestly, from a perspective, from a, from a physical point of view, this car is probably up in the air a bit, but don't worry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I think I, I see that and I do worry a bit and I think, oh, I'll just drop it down. I'll just drop it down a bit. Um, I'm saying I, I think I see that because I'm actually narrating this after I've done it. I prefer to do it that way because it, it lets me concentrate on my drawing and uh, I don't have to worry about narrating while I'm going along. There we go. I never kind of, in these sketchbooks, I never go right to the end of things and I'll just, a drawing will just fade out. And remember I said, start inside and work outwards. It's quite interesting when you do that because if you do get called away your drawing doesn't look too unfinished it might look like a little vignette um, so if you didn't want to finish it you might say well I've done enough I've done enough in this case I was happy to take it on a bit more when I got back cycling and sketching is, is a, a favorite activity of mine It means you don't get all the sketching done you want, as you saw that I didn't finish this. It also means you don't go as far on your cycle, but it's a lovely thing to do. And this particular day, we were going along an old railway track in the Herald. Um, there's some beautiful, beautiful cycle tracks now in France. Really well maintained. This railway track was so smooth all the way. The surface was really good. We stopped in this place for lunch. When you get to this stage in a drawing as well, you're not always looking at what you see. You've got the bare bones of it and you're, you know, I talked about missing things out or adding things. Well, in this case, you're saying, what will make sense here? What will make the drawing work? I think when I get here, I'm thinking that I've gone far enough. I've gone far enough on that side and I've gone far enough there. I'm looking here now and I wanted that little, is it a pigeon here, this round tower building in. And there's my rest of my fence. And what a mess that is, but don't worry. It is that sketchy feel to it. It's an indication of that side. It's the side of a little river. There's mountains in the background and, and I'm not going to draw them. Sometimes I do, but this time I'm not because I want them to have a soft edge at the top. So I'll paint them, I'll, I'll, when we come to the painting, I'll paint them, but I'm not using, I'm not drawing them. 
now I've got a decision to make, finish this car, there we go, window's not big enough, car door, and now I'm thinking, where's the wheel, there's, that'll do, that'll do, there's the wheel, there's the wheel, that gives an indication, that gives a kind of a suggestion of parked cars by the side of this, this river. I'm looking now, jumping over, thinking that needs, they've got to do something there, bring that down. And foliage is a, is a godsend, so there I've just said, oh, we'll put, a, we'll put a tree over the top. And I'm looking there, and, and I'm looking at my picture, and I'm thinking, I'm happy with that. That's kind of got the mood and the feel. Beautiful, beautiful houses, kind of built on the side of the river. So here we go with my painting. Um, ultramarine blue, it's a number 10 sable brush. And the paint is Windsor & Newton Artists Watercolour. Um, I would recommend to anybody that you use artist quality, any brand. Um, and the reason I would recommend it is because if you need to lift it after, or even during sometimes, you can wet it and lift it. Some of the student quality paints this stain. And this sketch, I want that tree to, um, to pop out of the sky, so I've painted around it a bit. But as you can see, not too neatly, not too precise. We don't want, precision's our enemy on sketches like this. Now I'm adding burnt sienna in there and mixing it on the paper with the blue to give a few ideas of cloud and leaving some white to give an idea of cloud. And then I've dried my brush and just roll it over to add some light and just lift that water there. You don't have to do that, but I guess I did. And again, roll it over, roll the brush over to add some light in the, in, in, in the clouds. The watercolour's gone into the roofs of the buildings. Well, that doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter. Don't stress about any of that. Enjoy the process. And here I've got some raw sienna and I'm adding cobalt violet into it to mix again on the paper and create a nice warm road at the front. Raw sienna here, raw sienna on the buildings, um, kind of half going round the windows but don't worry, don't worry about being um, too finicky, too fussy, adding cobalt violet into that. I'm thinking maybe there'll be a white house there. No, no, it won't. It'll be a cobalt violet house. And you can see how big this brush is here. I, I, a rule of thumb is stay with as big a brush as you can for as long as you can. And in this first pass, this first wash, I like to use a very big brush. I like to use... Um, lots of water in my mix, so you can. There is lots of water in the mix. You can see it's not strong pigment. It's lots of water. It'll dry back very light. And I like to be imprecise. Not neat. Not neat. Not tidy. I don't like my sketches to be tidy. And it's really important to me that I mix, I do mix in the palette, but it's really important that I mix on the paper. The watercolour paper has a, has a part to play in this sketch. Um, and watercolour paper, combined with the water and the watercolour, it works long after you've put it on, and you've no control over that. But if you embrace it and let it happen, you get some lovely effects. So you can mix on the paper, you can let it do its thing. at that and there I've got a dry brush and I'm, that, that's the where the book meets the two pages meet and it, it kind of the water sinks in there sometimes I don't worry about it but in this case I've lifted it it'll, a lot will sink back you'll see it it'll start sinking back as the water moves when you when you're painting watercolor like this you're going from light to dark so you first wash it's very light, very watery. 
and you build up in subsequent washes um, the dark parts to get the tonal variation. This green will be, well it is, Windsor Lemon and Prussian Blue, a lovely light green. And when you mix Windsor Lemon and Prussian Blue, you can mix on the yellow side, on the blue side, you've got all kinds of variations within that. In this case it's quite a, a lemony, lemony green, not so much Prussian Blue in it. It might not remain like that throughout the sketch as we add layers to it. So you can see again, it's not like doing a jigsaw. I'm not saying, right, I'll paint that tree. I'm building it up. I'm building up the light to dark. And in subsequent washes, I will add more dark to bits that I've already painted. There's a dark green, and that'll be Prussian blue and burnt sienna. And I'm letting it mix into there and I might give it a bit of a hand, I think. It's, it doesn't look like it's not mixing too well there. As a general rule, don't fiddle when you've put it on. Um, but sometimes you can add a bit of water and, and feather things about. There, I'm going to do that there, I think. Just... Oh, I didn't do it so bad. A little bit on there, but I'll leave that for later. A little bit around the car, make the cars pop out. Still looking very untidy, and, and at these stages in, in your sketches, never make the judgments. Um, you, you might see things that you think, well, that's not right, I've got to fix that. Don't. Don't fix anything until the end. Things look very different after that, when you get to the end. There, I've let this dry, this wash, and you can see it dries back a lot lighter, a lot lighter. See, I've, I'm happy with those clouds that uh, we got from rolling the brush. In my subsequent wash, this second wash that I'm going to put on, I'll use a, a smaller brush. I've gone to, I think that's an eight. And I don't know if you can tell, but now my mix has more pigment in it and less, less water. So it's a stronger mix. Can you see that there? It's a stronger Prussian blue mix. And that's the background mountains that I didn't draw because I wanted it to have quite a soft edge at the top and the mountains weren't probably that blue but it's a good tip um, when you're sketching when you've got the distance to blue it, blue it back and it goes away and it gives space in the picture so cold colours, the blues recede into the picture and warmer colours, the browns and the reds they come forward and it's not a bad idea on those background hills to blue them back. And that's a case of not painting what you see, but in fact changing things slightly to add to the mood and atmosphere. And in this wash, I'm here now, I am conscious of the edge of the roofs. Not conscious enough to get a smaller brush, but conscious enough to make it a little bit neater. And there we go. And that lovely Prussian blue colour will frame the buildings at the fr uh, in front of it. I've got some green up in the sky there. It doesn't matter. Can you see on the left by the two trees that I put in, in ink? There, where I am. There's a bit of green in the sky. Don't worry about that. First of all, there's things you can do if you're, so, if you're so bothered, but I don't think I'm even bothered. And when I say there's things you can do, I'm talking about the lifting that the artist's quality paints allow you to, um, to do. I've gone down a brush now and that's, it might be a four or six. I think it's a four. And I've got myself some burnt sienna there and I'm putting it on quite strongly you can see that's thick pigment and I'm doing that because it's I like the the contrast or the the tension there is between the Prussian blue at the back and the burnt sienna it's a nice nice mix 
Now there you can see on the house on the right that the burnt sienna has, has gone up into the mountains at the back. Not sure, might not be bothered, we'll see at the end, not now. Try not to fix things on the go. It's a disaster. Wait, wait, wait till the end. Now I've pulled some of the blue into that mix. Again, it's fine. It's, it's meant to be's. There aren't mistakes. There are only meant to be's. Alvaro Castanier, who's a, a lovely watercolour artist, he said that in one of his videos. I've never forgotten. It's really good advice. You know, you, we need to enjoy these processes. And if we're worried all the time about making mistakes, that really impacts that enjoyment. And, and you've got to get beyond that and think, well, I'm just going for it. I'm just doing it. It's only a piece of paper and some paint. Down into my four brush there and just adding some more darker green. That green, um, that darker green is Prussian blue and raw sienna. And then I'm taking the, the tree down a bit to um, to let the fence be in the air. And then I'm just adding some Prussian blue in. That's a good thing. You know, you're working wet in wet at this wash. And just add a bit of Prussian blue in and let it mix. Let it do its thing. Let the watercolour paper and the water and the paint just go. Let them free. There's my dark. And I'll cut out these cars to let them pop out of that darkness. Leaving bits of that very first wash, little bits, and letting the paint just run. I'm just thinking that I'm adding just Prussian blue there again and letting it, making sure I connect it with some wet paint that I've already put on so that they will work together. Again, taking that path down a bit. I'm really sorry that's wobbling. I didn't realise it was doing that. I'll have to try and get it on a firmer, a firmer footing when I'm doing these recordings. It's my light green, which would be a Windsor lemon and Prussian blue. That's a very dark, so that'll be a Prussian blue and a burnt umber, or a burnt sienna, but I guess it's a burnt umber. Even though I've done that in ink, I'm going over with the Prussian blue and burnt umber. And those dark trees are a real gift for us because they give us that, allow us to get that variation in tone. And that mix is pr it's mainly Prussian blue, but by now my palette is a mess and colours have run together. 
and it's vaguely in the area of dark green and that's, that's enough, that's enough to know. I never clean my palette during a sketch or during a painting and I never change my water. When I'm sketching outdoors I do have a little metal palette which I'll take with me but I also use the, the Pentel water brushes with it as well as if I, if I can't get a, a cup of water or a jar of water somewhere I'll use my Pentel water brush which are lovely little tools. You can see when they dry, I think to myself, they've dried back just a bit light, so I'll add a bit more dark on them. Just the same with the drawing, I'm working quite quickly. It's a lovely little... Here all, this area, um, uh, I guess it's between Bezier and Mazamir. It's beautiful. There's just little villages, beautiful little villages everywhere you go. Um, and we certainly will visit again. And as well as, I didn't, you don't get as much sketching done on a cycle trip as you want. But I did get a lot of photographs taken. And, but I've got to say this. There's nothing that can substitute for sitting down and looking and sketching. You make a connection with what you're looking at in a way that you don't on a photo because a photo it's fleeting and you've not had the chance to kind of sit there and absorb the view but needs must when you look at a sketch that you've done after a trip it really brings back really brings back the memory of that trip even years later so that that process where you've sat there for an hour, half an hour, an hour and a half, is, is so valuable. I'm starting to get lots of, if, if you squint at that, there's lots of lights and darks. I know a lot of them will be filled in, but you want, when you squint at your picture at the end, you want to see variation between light and dark. If it looks all the same, I always think, ooh, that's not so successful. There we go, looking more and more like a car now, or suggesting that it's a car more, more now than it did before. And that'll be French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. So I don't have a black in, in my palette, and I don't have a green. But for the darkest colour I can mix with my palette is French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. And it looks nearly black. You can see it's just slightly on the Burnt Umber side on some of that, slightly browner. And with greens, I don't have a green, and I always mix my greens. Down, still down to my four brush. I haven't gone to my fiddly little riggers yet. I will do. These cars at the front will give us a chance to add some nice colour at the end. And shadows are a godsend. The sun was kind of pretty much right in front of us and I'm thinking maybe a bit dark and shadows, a bit brown them off a bit I haven't decided to and that kind of suggestion of shadow does does make the car pop out yeah that's browned off a little To marine and burnt umber there on the wheels. Suggestion of something going on there, God knows what. Can you see the pen lines coming through, especially on the houses? It's lovely. I love to see that. I love to see that. Right, well, I've really kicked the table over there. Sorry. Let's see if I get it back. Yes, I do. Let's hope I've realised it's rocking. I haven't. 
I'm going to have to fix our table. That's a cobalt violet into the green mix and it makes it kind of quite grey. And these, I love these plane trees. Especially this time of year when they've been, when the leaves are nearly gone and you just see the trees. Just hundreds of years of trees pollarded to give shade. A lot of these, when you, when you go up to them, the hollow inside, the so old and the hollow inside. I, sk I cycled the Canal de Midi. I've cycled it several times, but the last time I cycled it, they were chopping a lot of these trees down. They've, um, they've had some sort of disease. Which, in some ways, is a shame, and it's the iconic archway of trees over the canal is beautiful. But in other ways, if, if you're a, an artist... There was some benefit because the views suddenly were, were, were quite stunning across the countryside. And they've not done it everywhere, they've just done it in, in parts. That's a good trip, the cycle and sketch, good canal de midi. I once did that with a group of Canadian students. It was a fantastic trip. You don't have to do so much distance in your cycling because you're doing your sketching. And being the canal, it's flat. But although it's flat, you're bouncing on tree roots a lot. It's 250k from Toulouse to the Mediterranean and uh, I think we didn't go quite as far but we, we went to Narbonne so we, we did over 200k. Canal de Midi is uh, good for a cycling holiday. There's lots of, it's set up for it. There's lots of stops on the way where you can get bed and breakfast and there's places safely to put your bike. Here we go, I'm going to go with red. I think that's a cadmium red. Oh, I'm not so sure. Might be a mix of cadmium and rose madder. But, the point is it's red. Nice, some red at the front. Constable would be proud of us. With the cars, I'm not painting them the colour that I see, that they really are. I'm just choosing colours. I'm not, I want the red to, to work against the green and give us a lovely, lovely contrast. I'm not going to paint them all red. There's a blue one. I would say that's Mainly ultramarine, but it's from the palette, so there could be all sorts in it by now. And here's an orange one. Strange choice of colour that. I probably I don't think I'd choose orange again if I did it now. I've decided that the background hills have dried too light, so I'm just putting another wash of Prussian blue on there. And I'm just kind of using the water to rub out that burnt sienna that went into the mountains when we did the burnt sienna roofs. It's a number four brush, number four sable brush. I like the effect of the background mountains where when the houses pop out because of them. It kind of really kind of shows you the roofs and the, and the 
construction of the houses, the way that they, they're not kind of precise and straight and, and they've settled at all different angles over the years. I'm thinking here, I need some more variety in the house walls. They're all pretty much the same tone, so I'm adding some raw sienna in there. And again, by now it's raw sienna from my palette, so there'll be all sorts in it. A little bit of perhaps cobalt violet or some grey mix added in there. Just something from the palette. Take that house down so that we see the railings fully. And don't be too worried about pure colour now. My palette's quite messy and I'm happy to just pick up what's there. Just get some variety. I don't be neat. Make it untidy. And I'm definitely not looking at the view now. This is all about making the painting work, this step. moving across the paper. And I've got my rigger brush there. Can you see the very long hairs on it? It's a number two rigger. And I've got some ultramarine blue in there and I'm just Suggesting that these shutters are ultramarine blue. I don't actually think they were. But it works. It works for the picture. A bit of dark suggestion of the gnarled trunk in that plane tree. Fantastic. Fantastic, these trees. Every French square has these trees. Add in the jewellery now. That's a Joseph Zabukvich coat. Joseph, Joseph Zabukvich is a, a wonderful watercolour artist from Australia. And when he got to this stage, he'd say, We're just going to add the jewellery. And that's what we're doing now. We're close to finishing, we're just adding the jewellery bits. Various bits of blue, or that's probably a bit of cobalt turquoise light in there. And what I would say about this sketch is, it's quite untidy, um, but I like that. 
And if you try to fix bits now, you'd be there all day because you'll have to go and fix everywhere and it'll just, just look so unbalanced. And this kind of untidy, quick, energetic look really kind of captures the mood of that place. I've just made this one up myself. I thought, oh, I'll have some shadows from those fences. And again, they're not neat. And for a quick one hour sketch, I'm very happy with the, uh, the outcome. And remember at the very start we said, we're trying to do two things, tell the story of the sketch's construction. You can see the pen lines there beautifully and tell the story of the place that we're actually sketching. And San Gervais, Chouel le Mer in the Herald, a lovely little French village. Lovely place for lunch on our sketching on our cycling sketching holiday. Final touches are dark. Should be stopping. You never know when to stop. And as soon as you, it gets into your head, should I stop? Probably the best thing to do is stop. Don't try and neaten anything up now. I'm sorry about the, the wobbling the table. I'll have to get that table, make that table sturdy for the next one. I was so involved in the sketch I didn't realise. <laughs> 